Here Bias. we go, folks. Bias Lions fan. No, Lions yeah. are Lions are good. Probably the best team in the NFL. Where we stand on November 11th, although <clears throat> there is an undefeated team still. Um, but here we are breaking down Week 10. It was kind of an interesting week. I, I felt like it wasn't that great. Um, looking at scores across the board, it, it kind of sure seems that way. It wasn't that great of a week. Some tough weeks. So. But we'll kick it off in a positive spin here, uh, and we'll talk about Bijan Robinson, who has been. By the awesome way, I was a Lions fan before it was cool. So, yeah, there's a new T-shirt floating around that says that. So, just just to be clear, I'm not bandwagoning. Lifetime, yeah, you, gotta, you gotta have been there during the tough times. So, they were, um, yeah, but yeah, Bijan Robinson, man, he's <coughs> been awesome. Um, just looking at his game log fantasy points in the last five weeks, 24, 21 and a half, 20.1, 18 and 27.9, the RB one on the week with two games to, or two teams to go tonight, but uh, 116 rushing yards, three catches with 28 receiving yards, two total touchdowns. Bijan managers love to see Tyler Algier get stuffed three times at the one yard line. <laughs> I've seen that. And yeah. It's like, where's B John? And then he comes right. in and he scores. So um, they need to hopefully do that more, but yeah, the guy's been awesome. He's averaging over a hundred, just over a hundred scrimmage yards per game. So he's on pace for over 1700 total yards um, and uh, double digit touchdowns as well. So just having a really good year, 12, 12 total touchdowns. He has 40 catches on the year. So, you know, he's on pace for um, – what is that? Uh, doing math here. He's on pace for almost 70 catches. Yeah, he's he's proving what that's, we uh, wanted. So Yeah, that's, uh, that's really good, 70 catches. Yeah. Yeah, and I would say maybe you should trade him after his first big game back five weeks ago. Hopefully he didn't listen. And, oh, that's uh, a knee-jerk reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but just, yeah, tale of two seasons for sure for Bijan. Uh, didn't score over 15 points the first five weeks of the year and now has five straight weeks of over 15 points and four of the last five over 20 points. So uh, good stuff there, good stuff. Um, you wanted to talk about Aaron Rodgers and, and the Jets in general, I'm sure. Oh, my God. They're just uh, – yeah, just just a grease fire, you know, Um you can throw the Chicago Bears in on that too. It's just like teams that you would think that were going to be good, and they get a lot of talk. And you know, I know they're a New York team, and it's just um, Father Time's caught up to this dude. You know, you know we can blame offensive lines all we want and all this other stuff. It's time to move on. You know that the Jets are going to have to um, they're going to have to rebuild again. You know, and the you know they say, they say, uh, well their their defense is good, and you know they got Brees Hall, and sorry they don't they don't have a quarterback. I mean, he's had a couple of good games this year, but yesterday, you know they were kick. I think it was the Cardinals were kicking his ass. You know, yeah, yeah. I would say like Rodgers hasn't been terrible this year, um, but um, there's just something lacking with the Jets overall. I don't know if it's leadership if it's firing their head coach was a mistake or whatever it was yeah they seem to have given up as well you know it's tough to say you know rogers he's probably going to throw for 25 touchdowns over 44 you know 42 40 hundred over 4,000 yards for sure so um you know he's not gonna have a terrible year but it's just not not clicking there and you know, Hall's Devon been a disappointment Devonte adams uh connection is kind of you know, that's not, you know, it's not like Spock with the Vulcan mind transfer going on there or anything like that. So, yeah, we haven't uh, really seen, we've only seen one good game really from them with, with Adams, you know. So, um, uh -huh. yeah, just not, not working. You know, Garrett Wilson was the wide receiver three heading into this week. Uh, I think that's fallen a little bit, but um, he's still going to have a good year. But yeah, just not what we expected from the Jets, that's for sure. Um, I have Chuba Hubbard here, a guy we haven't talked about in a while. Um, yeah. We haven't talked about a lot. Like he was awesome once again, over uh, 170 total yards with a touchdown, 
four catches. You look at this guy's numbers and you're like, you start statting it out and it's like, holy crap, like Chuba Hubbard's going to have a, a, a monster, monster year. He's on pace for over 1,600 total yards. Um, he's averaging three catches a game, so he's going to have 50 catches. He has seven touchdowns, so he's also going to have like 12 touchdowns. We're talking about very similar to Bijan type numbers, <laughs> like Chuba Hubbard, which is kind of crazy. And I wanted to talk about him because I think he's going to be a problem for Jonathan Brooks. Um, obviously this year, I don't expect too much from Jonathan Brooks this year. And now that they paid Chuba, they don't really have that incentive of like, well, let's just bench Chuba and see what we have in Brooks. They don't have that incentive. Now, the, you know, two running backs can flourish and we'll see what happens there. But um, well, just look at the I Lions. Think, yeah. 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 Well, you need the offensive line to start there. But well, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. But for you dynasty players, which I know we have a lot that, that watch this channel, like I think it's going to be a problem for Brooks. Like Chuba Hubbard's just not going away. And the, and and the one thing that's in favor of Chuba Hubbard is we know he's good. We don't know if Jonathan Brooks is good. We think he's good, but we don't know. And so um, don't be surprised if like Jonathan Brooks just like turns out to not be much really, you know. So, um, but he just the highest, like that. Yeah, he was the highest rated running back in the draft and stuff like that. And um, so, <clears throat> you know. Hopefully it works. You know, we'll see. I mean, what they do, spend a second round draft pick on them. So they want to see if they're ass, you know, if they're, if the guy's going to work out. So I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, but they're not going to bench Chuba though. No, no, hell, hell no. That, that would be the, he's the best, that, best offensive player on the Carolina Panthers. So um, that would well, be. I think that the general thought was, okay, like Chuba, nice story, but Brooks comes back and then they, they see what he has and, um, now that they paid Chuba, like they're not going away from him. He's the RB six right. on the year, RB thirteen in points per game. So he yeah, he's been he's been awesome. Um, next up here we have uh, CD Lamb as a loser, um, and just the Cowboys in in general. Once again, uh, ten targets, nice, but six catches, twenty one yards. Cooper Rush with terrible. Trey Lance is probably not going to be much better, but um, yeah, this is this is bad. This is not good. Dak's not coming. I don't think Dak's coming back. Now they're blaming, you know, the sun coming in. You know, we've heard that discussion uh, enough. And, you know, I don't understand. I guess there's a curtain there where they can pull yeah. the curtain, you know, to uh, like for concerts and WWF wrestling or s stuff like that. And, and it's like, you know, we've heard this has been happening for years, you know. They, I think it's this time of year, the late – the later fall, you know, like guys, certain positions of the field and, you know, there's kind of stupid complaints and Jerry Jones, you know, sorry, you're a dumb shit. You know, you're, you're an yeah. old man. Sorry. Go back, go back to old man stuff. You can't run that team very well. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad news for the, uh, for the Cowboys <clears throat> overall. It really is. So I'd um, trade Micah Parsons. Yeah, well, I mean, it's gonna, too late now, but well, no, I mean, in the off season, yeah, you know, this year, this year, it's toast. They're not, they're not making the playoffs, and they're not going on a magical run, and and all that other it's stuff. Need a but, real coach. Yeah, you know, I don't think the coach. I don't know how you get twelve wins for three years in a row and say it's a coach problem, but the guy gets. Uh, slapped around quite a bit, you know, and and all the other stuff, and. You know, the defense under Dan Quinn, you know, was okay, but they still couldn't stop the run. They still can't stop the run. You know, yeah. it's um so you get you get rid of your best asset and you get something for them and you start the rebuild, you know. Yeah, we'll see. I don't think they're gonna do that though, because I think he likes his stars. So but I think Dak's done for the year. It's not good news for CeeDee Lamb, who was good with Cooper Rush a couple years ago, but <coughs> like Cooper Rush has regressed. So Yeah, um, he's, they figured him out. So <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I put CMC in here as a as a winner. Um, you know, his his stat line was very CMC like over 120 yards of six catches, no touchdown. I think he was actually betting favorite, like he was like the best odds to score a touchdown, but um, the reason why he's a winner is like he literally came back. He got his almost 20 touches, which is what he was reported um, to potentially get. 
and he literally played uh, 88% of the snaps. Like, he came back and just played all the snaps. Like, they don't give a crap. They're just rolling with CMC. So, um, you you have no worry about limitations for the, at least the first few weeks. He's full-on CMC, and he's going to be awesome. So, if you survived, if you made it to 500 or even a game below 500 or whatever – you know, you got the next four weeks of, of full on CMC. Hopefully, carries you to a, a playoff run. So, um, yeah, nice to see that there was just no 50 50, 50 percent of the snaps easing him in. It was like, nope, CMC's back. CMC's back. So, uh, good stuff there. Yeah, good stuff there. And he's just so good. It's yeah, the guys who drafted him won. One, you know, I don't know. Hopefully they're not eliminated in your league, you know, because you couldn't play this guy. But <clears throat> if you're uh, in line for fantasy playoffs and CMC's playing, you're, um, you know, the future is bright. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you have Caleb Williams and the Bears, 120 passing yards for Caleb Williams. They lose to the Patriots. Um Zero touchdowns, zero interceptions. And he has – the Bears, they went on that run before their bye four or five-week stretch where they were looking good. They have still yet to do it against a good defense. I think it was more they played the Colts, Rams, Panthers, Jags four games in a row, and I think we got tricked by that. Uh, they have not performed against a good defense. Um, they have not looked good. That coach is going to get fired. It's the Hail Mary. Yeah, Since I mean – since the has, but, just, yeah. but you just look at again underperformed against Tennessee, uh, an above average defense against Houston, an above average defense, Washington, who is an above average defense, Arizona, above average, Patriots, above all the above average defenses they have not performed, and they played a cupcake schedule there. So if you start looking at their schedule, the Bears. I'll let you uh, say what you want to say here, but you get the Packers, Vikings, Lions, Niners. Vikings, Lions, like you have a gauntlet. You have a gauntlet into the end of the year. So they're already starting. They're pointing fingers to the coaches, and you know they're gonna yeah, yeah. Coach needs all, to all this, all this shit. You know, and so, so they'll be reloading. Um, you know, the wide receivers. You know, as good as they are, it, it's not for fantasy. You know, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, Roma Dunze. It's it's not it's not happening, unfortunately, you know. So something really, it's the offensive line. Yeah, well, they, they supposedly had all a bunch of good guys, but um, it seems you know that's seems to be a common theme, you know. Even even um, even Kansas City can uh, do well without a a very dominant offensive line. So it's kind of strange, but. Um, yeah, but you're talking about a rookie quarterback. like he, he, and, and we're not talking about an average offensive line. We're talking about a, a bad offensive line. You got sacked nine times and yesterday. That's, you know, that's not all on the offensive line. Sometimes that's on him, but um, it, the offensive line's terrible and they've regressed and the coach is going to get fired and Ben Johnson's going to be coaching Caleb Williams. No, no. Um. Speaking of another running back that's going off, James Conner, who is just, you know, the guy's awesome. Uh, 12, you know, not an eye-popping stat line, but over 120 yards with five catches and a touchdown. You start looking at his numbers, um, and he's also on pace for 1,600 total yards, you know, 50 catches, 10 touchdowns. Like, this, this guy's guy, been awesome. He's the identity of the team, you know, to a certain point. You know, I know Kyler Murray and all that other crap, but like James Conner, if you watch the Cardinals play, and this guy, this guy is a stud. You know, oh, yeah, absolutely. He he is a friggin' stud, and, and the Steelers, Steelers were kind of dumb for letting him go. You know, Steelers don't usually make make uh, bad choices, but um, James Conner on the Steelers would have been a lot better. You know. Yeah, a lot better for the Steelers' identity and stuff like that. So, but anyway, yeah, hasn't missed a game yet, which you know I don't think he's ever played a full season, but he's on pace to break his best um, season, which is um, you know fourteen hundred and seventy total yards and thirteen touchdowns back in twenty eighteen. But yeah, I mean you don't think of the Cardinals as like a team that beats you up, but they kind of are. 
They got, you know, big receivers and Michael Wilson and Marvin Harrison. You got James Conner, Trey McBride, you know, they kind of beat you up and stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, but he's awesome. He's having a great year. You wanted to talk about golf, five interceptions. Um, are you worried about golf? Is no. the, the weak link of the Lions? No, I didn't think he was going to um, have a good game, you know, anyway. But um, the five INTs, you know, there's like there's like two of them that are, you know, I know they're, they're tagged on him. He, but he won the game, but you know, his, his, his fantasy relevancy was in the loser category <clears throat> yesterday. So yeah, that's, that's why I put him there. You know, I know he, he's, uh, am I worried about him? No, no. Yeah. We'll see. You know, um, you're going to have games. I mean, not five interceptions, but just like bad fantasy game. Uh, and, you know, I, I, ideally the Lions don't – how they were winning um, these last um, several games where they were putting up, you know, Goff – you look at how many times Goff – 23, 18, 25, 25, 15, 22. That's his pass attempts. That's ideally what they want to do is, like, not have him throw a lot. So, All right, run first. Fantasy, yeah, and for fantasy it's going to be a little tough to, to trust, but um, obviously this is – a an outlier game with, with five interceptions. Um, I put Audric Estime in here, only 53 yards on the ground, but um, if it, this is kind of a way of, of putting Javante Williams in the loser category without adding a loser here. But um, if you have Javante Williams, I think you can drop him. Um, Estime took over the early downs role. He played 45% of the snaps. He's a rookie, by the way. Um, Javante Williams had one carry and two catches. And play less than thirty percent of the snaps. You can drop him. He's he's cuttable. It's not happening. Um, they're moving on. They already said they wanted to get Estimate more involved, and here we go. So, um, you know, Estimate could turn into something. Uh, you know, you're going to have to see it to before you start um, start him. That was against the Chiefs, by the way, which is uh, a tough defense and things like that. Um, so, you know, I'm interested to see with with Estimate. Him and Braylon Allen for the Jets look similar. You know, they're bigger backs. You know, they um, when they get the ball, they're they're always um, you know making positive yards and and you know kind of plowing ahead and stuff like that. So um, yeah. I understand the Broncos. I think Javante Williams is his last year is like in the you know with a in his contract, so he'll be moving on. It's too bad he was. You know, Javante Williams was was a good back, and you know, and he got hurt, and you know, Sean Payton come in, and all that other. But anyway, so Andre, 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 Andre May, Notre Andre Dame, Estime. yeah, 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 yeah. So he's definitely worth an ad, and um, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, if he becomes a little bit more fantasy relevant. Yeah, DeAndre Hopkins, which actually I was a little bit surprised because I was like, if I started Hopkins and I got four for 56, I think I was okay with it just because he was going against Sertan. But um, disappointment, obviously, from what he was two weeks ago where he uh, you know, went off. So what did you want to mention about Mr. DeAndre Hopkins? Yeah, she kind of shows you um, if you want to take a positive out of that. Um that Kansas City, well, you know, we all know how they won. They blocked a field goal and all that other stuff. But uh, Kansas City can win without huge uh, offensive output, you know. So a little luck of the Irish there, I guess. Or Actually, they, um, I saw that on the All-22, their block kick. They made that happen. There's this new technique going around where one of the, the linemen basically undercut the arm of one of the the guards, which drops the guard and, and opens up and makes the basically makes the line collapse. It's kind of interesting. Cowboys mm -hmm. blocked the punt um, against the Saints, and then Chiefs just did that. So that's going to be a new thing going around the NFL. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, you got to temper expectations a bit. Um, it was against Tampa Bay, which is um, his big game, and Tampa Bay is like a funnel for for receivers. So. Um, 
you know, but I, I was actually, you know, selling people to bench him because I thought he was going to get Sertan. I don't know how much Sertan was on Hopkins, but to, for me, if I started him and I got four for almost 60, but going <laughs> knowing he was playing against Sir Patrick Sertan, um, then I think I was okay with it. But Drake May, um, I have in here. Not not the most impressive day. Um, obviously, he, he just looks good. 180 passing yards, a touchdown, interception, 24 rushing yards. And I think we might need to start – talking about Drake May um, and uh, what he is doing. And, like, you just look at his numbers. He's basically played – he started five games, but he got knocked out early in one of them. So he's really started – he's really started in four games, okay? And in those four games, he's averaging 227 passing yards, which would be almost 4,000 for for an entire year. Um. He's averaging – he has um, seven touchdowns in those four games, which would be about 30 touchdowns. Not to mention he runs the ball. Um, he runs the ball pretty well. He is on pace in those four games. He's averaging 43 rushing yards, which would be over 750 rushing yards. So we're talking about a guy that could potentially over – you know, extrapolate his stats, 4,000 passing yards, 30 touchdowns passing, over 750 rushing yards. Like – I guarantee you that's like similar to what Jaden Daniels is doing. Very similar to what Jaden Daniels is doing. So, um, you know, Jaden Daniels is um, averaging, he's on pace for about 3,600, 3,600 passing yards, 15 passing touchdowns. And then obviously he's doing a little bit more on the ground, but not much more, not much more. Like he's like, we should be talking about, you know, Jaden Daniels is on pace for 780 rushing yards. I just told you Drake May would have been on pace for, um, you know, 750. So we need to talk about Drake May. He's definitely been the second best rookie quarterback. Um, and you can make an argument if he keeps this up, like maybe he is even better this year than Jaden Daniels, which I know is crazy to say. But, get a little um, better. Yeah, get a little better team around him. Um, yeah. You'll definitely see an improvement. You know, we've, We've heard all year about how bad New England's offensive line is. So, I mean, you know, if they improve, improve the um, just general improvement in the offense, you know, I think they, I think they got, don't they got a rookie wide receiver who's pretty good? Well, they have a couple, but that, that's another point is they don't really have a wide receiver on the Patriots. Like Terry McLaurin for the Commanders is head and shoulders above anyone on the, on the Patriots, um, at least as of now. So, yeah, I mean, he's doing it. He's impressive. He's really good. And I know it's a small sample size, but uh, we need to start talking about him and just how good he's been. So wanted to bring that up. Justin Jefferson, nine targets, five catches, 48 yards. Sam Darnold kind of looked a little bit like a pumpkin uh, in this game, but they survived uh, three interceptions for Darnold. Um Worried about Justin Jefferson? Like, if we get a little bit more inconsistent, Darnold, or you think it's just kind of a blip? Because it was against no, the Jaguars. Every everyone yeah. was excited about like playing the Jags, but go ahead. No, I don't think. Um, you know, I think Sam Darnold threw three interceptions and stuff, so he was kind of looking like his old. Uh, he's seen ghosts out there, that type of stuff. But um, as far as Justin Jefferson, I think this is kind of a this is kind of a blip. This guy's him and him and Jamar Chase are pretty special wide receivers, you know. And yeah, he's um, hopefully e- easy stat line to pick on because you know we expect uh, more out of that. But you know these wide receivers are dependent on their quarterbacks. So sometimes when the quarterback is not things aren't synced up very well and then you kind of have a bad day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I put Calvin Ridley in here as a good, we finally saw a good game with him and Will Levis and, and Ridley's been really good um, the last four weeks. Uh, three for 42, 10 for 143, five for 73, and then five for 84 and two touchdowns for Ridley. That's his last four weeks. And uh, we hadn't seen it with with Will Levis, really, and then we finally saw it. He did get a garbage-time touchdown. Um, but either way, like, you, you don't really care too much about it. He's the only 
him and Pollard are really the only offensive weapons there. And, um, you know, Ridley's going to be a startable piece now from, from this point on, you know, cause we saw it with, with Levis. So just wanted to throw Ridley out there as a, as a winner. And then, um, I added uh, BTJ as a loser, my one loser that I added. And just the Jags offense in general, like, looks bad with, I mean, Mac Jones uh, as their quarterback. And I think, you know, I, I mentioned it before the report came out. I think Lawrence could miss the entire year. Uh, and then it came out yesterday before the games, you know, Lawrence could miss the entire year. Um, they has nothing to come back for, really. Um, they probably want to tank, to be honest. Like, I know the coach doesn't, but. Um, you know, they're two and eight them. They have to be up there for a top pick. And um, yeah, it's just bad, 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 bad for the Jags who, who went from like going into last year, people were thinking this could be the best offense in the entire NFL. And, uh, and now look at them. They literally have the number one pick uh, right now. They hold the number one pick in the draft. So that's, I thought New uh, England. Well, okay. New England won. So Nope, they're tied with the Giants. Them and the Giants are tied with two and eight records. So, and the Jags have had an easier strength of schedule. So, there are five five teams with six teams with two wins and and uh, five other teams. One, two, three, four, five other teams with three wins. So it's obviously still uh, too early to talk about it, but it's just crazy to think like they went from like everyone's sleeper Super Bowl pick. And, and I was skeptical about it, you know, like, I don't know, you know, we hadn't seen it and blah, 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 you know, Lawrence, I, we were even skeptical all the way when Lawrence was coming out of college. Like this guy had, a, you know, everything at Clemson and um, surrounding him and national championship caliber team. And just haven't seen it with Lawrence. Just Generational quarterback. Remember that's what they said. And, that ain't Maybe this it. is where Ben Johnson goes and fixes uh, no fixes Lawrence. So I mean, th- everyone's going to want this job. So um, and I hopefully the right offensive coach can come in and and fix it. So, but that is it for week ten. Um, I got still up in the air. Yeah, one other guy to add. Um, interesting stat line from Sunday Night Football: Joe Mixon. Um, I'm trying to find it. I think he had 25 carries at 46 yards. So that's not necessarily his fault, but, um, yeah, 25 carries, 46 yards. He had a touchdown. Um, but Lions run defense kind of, kind of, um, put the screws to him a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, they're, like the best team against running backs. I mean, his stat line comes out okay because he had 90 total yards and a touchdown because uh, he had 44 receiving yards. But, yeah, I mean, you can't really run on the Lions. So. Um, but that is it. Still up in the air if we're going to go live tonight. We'll see. Um, but um, for sure, later in the week we will. And uh, appreciate everyone. Help us get to 800 by the end of the month. And uh, we will see you all in the next video.